What's up ladies and gentle tubers, it's Ty from the Everide channel and in today's show we've got highlight footage from the official first day of the 2015 Emigride. This day's adventures would take us nearly 200 miles and 10,000 feet up from Moab, Utah to Imogene Pass in Colorado and beyond. I've never been on a day's ride where I've seen such diversity in nature and this section of riding was one of the most amazing rides I've ever been on so you're not going to want to miss this one. All started the night before when we were all assigned some really nice condos furnished by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. We dropped off our stuff, got some amazing swag bags from the Rocky Mountain guys and Fox, then piled into a gigantic sprinter van to visit Arches National Park and get to know the guys. First was Jesse, who I rode with on day one, who also bought Jeff Emick's KLR from last year's ride. Then there's Chris on a bottomed out KLR 650. James on an orange KLR650 with some custom graphics provided by his kids, and Grant, a professional photographer, on a fantastically customized XR650. This is Andrew. He was almost always smiling on a new KLR he painted himself. From Rocky Mountain, we had Justin on a WR250R, Ray on a KTM1190, Eric on a KTM690, Wes on the company KLR named Curly, and the owner himself, Dan Thomas, also on a KTM 690. From Fox, we had Mark and Brandon, both on KTM 690s, and the man himself, Jeff Emmett, on his practically stocked 2015 KLR 650. All right, this is the beginning. 2015 Emmick ride, I'm so stoked. I actually have the camera on the right settings today. This is so fantastic. We got a good crew ahead of us, a good crew behind us, making sure everybody turns. But a uh, beautiful ride ahead, I'm so stoked. Uh, oh, there's the Green River, oh, oh boy. <laughs> uh, pardon me, I'm, I am totally geeking out. This is, uh, yeah, this is like a bucket list dream come true. We're gonna go see so many amazing places that I've heard really awesome things about, so. Yeah, y'all. The trip out of Moab was beautiful and in places a bit familiar. This road is fantastic. So much fun. It was super twisty. But now it looks like, uh, hey, Jay, does that look familiar? That road over there is where you come out on the Utah BDR. That's what Sand Flats Road turns into if you take it the whole way. We're on the Utah BDR right now. That's pretty cool. That's fun. This all looks familiar to my brother Jay, although when we did it, he got lost and we went that way for like six miles. <laughs> Oh, I'm just giving you a hard time, Jay. It was okay that we got a little bit lost because this road, oh, buddy, it's good stuff. Finally, we branched off of the Utah BDR and took dirt towards Gateway Colorado. This KTM is fun. I've been following him. He's got lots of roost. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? <laughs> Whoa! Once back on the slab, we ventured on to have lunch at a park in Naturita. West, get up close on the west. Look how cool this guy is. The pavement continued to Telluride where the adventure got serious. 
The road to Imogene Pass proved that the Rocky Mountain guys were not lying when they said to bring knobby tires. Suddenly, I was immensely grateful to be on the DRZ. While the KLR could have done it, the Shinko 705 8020 tires would have struggled in the screen. And as you can see, with sheer cliffs to the right of the double track nearly the entire way up, this was not a place you wanted to lose track. Andrew found this out firsthand, and we were all glad that he and his bike were all right. One little slip to the right side of the trail, and it would have been a tragic situation. Oh, oh, oh that epic dismount! That was awesome! Let me help you, man. Wait for just a second. There we go. That's all right. I'm glad that happened to the left side. Not the first time. Oh, 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 oh. oh sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nice. <laughs> Notice that even after his crash, he was still smiling and having a blast. <laughs> Picked a bad line and kind of knew I did, so it was a bit too late to come to a stop without dumping it, so I bounced my front tire off the wall and just let it go. <laughs> Suddenly Telluride was a speck, and I realized that we had gone from the red of the desert to the pale green of the grasslands, to the dense green of the Rocky Mountain Forest, and onward to the hostile rocky slopes above the timberline. <laughs> <laughs> wow! We had gone from 90 degree heat to rain over the farmlands, all the way up to hail turned snow and whipping winds on Imogene Pass. And in all this, I have to say the DRZ and its dirt cheap mods were perfect. Some doubt the DRZ 400E's pumper carb in high altitudes, and while I did feel it wane on this final stretch, I was still happy to be in third gear, and at the summit was still managing power up wheelies in first and second. Finally, it was time to descend into Uray, and the backside of Imogene Pass was just as good. Look at these studs.
for a minute and rest, we found this little waterfall and Justin couldn't help but do some water crossings. And some waterfall crossings. <laughs> I was in such a good mood that I momentarily forgot that Jeff Emig is famous, and cat calling him like a pervy photographer was probably not a good idea. <laughs> Show me the sexy body! <laughs> The route to Yurei was more of the same, magnificence. Finally we stopped in town and the Rocky Mountain guys treated us to some delicious and much needed Mexican food. But while we stopped to eat, the storm rolled in. At 8,000 feet, storms aren't warm or pleasant. And we still had nearly 30 miles to go. I guess we're gonna test how waterproof my bag actually is. Let me tell you, the Million Dollar Highway is beautiful, but not a road you wanna take in the cold, dark, and wet. We had been mere inches from cliffs many times that day, but nothing made me pucker more than trusting in those knobby tires on a 50 mile per hour turn above a thousand foot drop into the rocky Red Mountain Creek below. The trip to Silverton was cold and wet, but when we finally fueled up at dark, everybody was still in great spirits. The final push took us up more dirt to the Eureka Lodge. It was finally time to test my high beams off the road and they were good. Needless to say, I slept really well that night. So thank you so much for watching, and if you'd like to see more of the Emig ride through Colorado and Utah, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned. Much love, you guys. Ever ride out.